Hello everyone and welcome back. So I decided to model this object in Odini, that is by the artist CG Gear at, in Art Station. As you can see, this is the original object. And I decided to model it in Odini to see what the challenges were. And I've got some tips that I want to share with you guys today. So for the cloud pads, I have these sections in here and the way I'm doing that is after the basic extruding and beveling, I am blasting a, uh, a group and then I'm selecting, in this case you can ignore this range and what I'm doing in here is creating an name attribute uh, for for each uh, eight primitives, so dividing the prim number by eight. But since I want them aligned in, in a specific order, I am also sorting, so shifting by four. So I have them in the correct position. So just uh, shift the primitive order. Then in a loop, I am, I'm creating this setup in here. So for each named primitive, I'm creating a rest position, then selecting the bottom and converting it to vertices and doing some UVs with the UV flatten. Then I promote the UVs to points and I assign to the position the UV attribute so I can have it flat. That way I can use a box clip to clip part of it which wouldn't be really possible with a curved surface, as you can see. So basically I want to clip the, the sides and that's what I'm doing in here with this box clip. Then I'm again uh, extracting the rest position and sending it back to the original position. As you can see, it's curved, but now it's clipped. Then just doing a quad remesh and reproject it so it keeps the same position, let's say. Because with the quad remesh, it softens a bit the shape. Then I'm using a ray to align it better to the original position. So that's basically it. Now for this cloud seam, I have. Uh, identical parts as you can see so they would end up giving the sa same exact pattern if I show you in here the version one as you can see they have almost the same pattern which is not nice and doesn't resemble our reference so as you can see in this second version they no longer have the same patterns they are slightly different, at least different enough, as you can see. And the way I'm doing that is by creating a bend stiffness attribute before the seam with the noise pattern, as you, as you can see, just changing the mean value to, to, to not be zero and the element size. And then in the vellum cloth, I'm assigning to the bend stiffness uh, scale by attribute and using that attribute in here. And that way I can get a slightly different result on each pad. So for this specific object, I'm using the exercise quad remesher. And if I show you an option in here, use primitive groups boundaries. If I disable this, you can see I will get corners all jacked up. And if I enable it, you can see how clean this looks and how useful it can be. Because before that, I had basically this result, which is not nice for subdividing it. So the way I'm doing those, basically this is using all the primitive groups that you have before the quadrum measure, and it will use them to split the, the quadrum measure, let's say. So I have a Boolean 
and from there I can create a group using the mean edge angle as you can see to select the, the hard edges let's say then I'm doing an edge cusp of those edges so separating the mesh by edges then I can use a connectivity of course and I will have a different class for each of those uh, primitives then I can do a groups from name and use the class attributes and uh, give it in a prefix deleting any any groups that are not in those that I set here fusing the points and then do, doing the the quad remesh and as you can see that gives a pretty good result that we can later combine and get something like this so coming back to these objects I have uh, these hard corners in here these sharp corners and I would like to subdivide it and if I subdivide it I will I will get these rounded corners and because I have these this inner extrusion in here, these insets. So the way I'm avoiding that, I'm group combining some of the edges, mostly the corner edges, and then I'm doing a crease on those on that group and increase it quite a bit. Then when I'm subdividing, I, I won't get that rounded corner look. And also I will get a smooth transition in here because I'm not applying the crease on there. But I am applying in here which is totally fine, it's just on the corner. But not in the center or in this rounded part. So that's how you can do the creasing. Because if I override the look, you will start to see, let me change the matte cap you will start to see uh, the low poly look let's say and if I remove it we will get a smooth look okay in these particular objects I have um, I've created this from curves and doing a bridge between the, the curves and then I want to boolean out the middle part so as you can see in here and the way I am doing that is of course by using a box but I need to orient it somehow to this point here in the middle that I manually selected so the way I'm doing that as you can see is by using some vex and uh, a script that I shared before a snippet that I shared before here on the channel and basically I'm taking the I have a base prim in here so as you can see this primitive in here that I'm orienting to that specific point so I'm getting the primitive number of that ba base prim and getting the normal then from the this target point in here I am extracting the also the normals and doing um, a, a rotation matrix from the base from the this polygon in here to the target point normal and then just getting the position from this point and orienting the the, the box as you can see you can get a pretty similar result with the copy two points but you will need to play with the app and you will need to mess with the rotations of the initial object or you can do it also in vex but it's just another way to do things and you get it pretty aligned in the middle which is also nice okay guys that was it i hope you have found uh, this useful and as always you can grab the scene file on my patreon and you can also check out my courses page or the shop page on patreon 
where I just released a new course on creating this procedural cookie and the fluid simulation or vellum simulation I should say and I also have other ones that I released in the past so if you're guys interested as you can see they are really cheap and that's it thank you and I'll see you around